Hi guys and welcome. Today I thought we'd have a go at making some shabby chic tags using some um, vintage photos. Now these ones are from the Tim Holtz found relatives, parents, um, and I have cut them down a little bit. Um, they were just in the length, not so much in the width. Um, so yeah, I thought we'd have a go at this today. You can off the butterfly, that's a bulb pin. You can actually hang a little um, charm if you want to, or a little tag of some sort, or put a word sentiment across, but we won't be doing that today. All right, I'll put that one off to the side. Now I make my own tags. So the measurements for these are three and two sixteenths, which is not quite three and a quarter across, um, and five and a half down, but you can make the tags any size you want, or if you've already got some purchased ones you can certainly use those and how I do the tops of my tags I, I get a strip of cardstock the same width um, so it can be any size so the same width I then fold it in half and I cut the um, corners off so you're going to get an even side each side and then I put it up to my card and then I just cut Cut the um, corners off like that and you'll end up with perfect tags every time and I keep a little bit of a template you've probably heard me uh, say this in previous uh, videos I keep a template so if this one is three and two sixteenths across I'll write that template tag three and two sixteenths because it doesn't matter about how long you make them the width is always going to be the same Beautiful. So we've got three tags to go. Now this one, um, the sample that I made up, it's got a stamped script background, which is that one. Um, so I'm not going to be doing that one today. I'll do another two types just to show you that it doesn't matter what type of background you have. So you can have a bit of a collage. Um, so I've just done some pattern paper, a bit of ledger. This one I've done a bit of book page. And then that was just some stamped script on some coffee dyed paper as a scrap that I found and I've just put it down the side for some extra contrast. So let's do these two and see what we come up with and then we can have a look at the three of them together just to give you an idea of the different type of backgrounds you can use with the same concept. So sometimes it's just a bit of trial and error finding sort of what you like. I don't want to make that too dark either. That one had a little bit of a white edge on it so I'm just sort of smudging it in a little bit. Beautiful. So, and then we've got a couple of photos to choose from. So we might go with two, two lighter ones this time. Actually, I like that. All right. And then I looked for um, putting a little something underneath the photo. So in my first one, I put a little bit of um, book page, which we can do if we find a sort of a more whiter piece. And you'll have different colors of book page. It just depends on how old the actual book is. But I don't wanna ink this one too much. I actually want the contrast of the white to show through like that. I might even trim it down a little bit more like that and this one over here being darker we've already got the book page down the side there so we could actually find something else as a contrast I've actually got some uh, this is Kaiser Craft from the Pen and Ink Collection. So look to your scrapbook papers as well, sometimes for a little bit of inspiration. 
and then we'll tear off a bit of that. So it'll stay in the same theme, but it'll be a little bit different than the book page. So you could actually stamp, stamp on a bit of paper in this instance to create that if you didn't have something similar in the way of contrasting paper. Or you might have some digital prints that you want to use. I think that, that one there that I put down, that was a digital paper and I use it to collage a fair bit actually. The beauty of digital is you can print it a thousand times if you want and just use it in your projects once you've purchased it. And then we glue it, glue it down where we want it. I'm just using art glitter glue. I just find it quicker in these types of projects. If I was doing a mass collage, I'd use uh, my glue stick. All right, so let's have a look at the butterflies. So I sort of, these are die cuts, these ones. Um, I didn't have a punch with one quite that size. Ideally, I would have liked them to be just a, a little bit bigger, but you've got to work with what you've got. I could have probably um, hand cut cut some. So think outside the square. If you don't have a tool, look to cut your template out with a bit of cardstock and then fold over your book page and use it that way. So that one, I might try and go a lighter one for that photo too. So I can put him over there because he can be a bit darker because I've got the lighter contrast there. So this one I'm going to try and ink the edges to define it a little bit more. It's a little bit more fiddly but it'll um, make the butterfly pop out. And you don't have to use butterflies. Um, you can use flowers, die cuts, Yep, so you can see the lighter one just pops out. I don't necessarily need to ink around my photos to distress them. They're already distressed, but I'll just do the edges because I did cut, cut them down a little bit. Okay, butterfly, butterfly. And then I'll use an awl and I'm just going to uh, put a hole in the butterfly but I'm going to go more up because we're going to hang this bulb pin and brad. So I've just got a brad and I've got a, it's not a mini um, brad, it's a little bit bigger, it's got a little bit bigger head on it which I wanted because that will hold the ball, the head of the bulb pin. And if you're gonna decorate it, you probably should decorate it now. You can, of course, always slide it up and open the bulb pin and put something on it later. What, I'm, what I mean is you could slide it up like that and take it off like that and then put something dangly on it and then add it back on and slide it. It's a bit more fiddly. If it's laying flat on the page, it'd be easier. Beautiful. Let me turn that. We won't glue him on yet. We'll just finish the other one off. So much fun. I love adding all different elements to a project. Um, you don't necessarily have to stay in theme. So butterflies, flowers, whatever you are. You could colour those with some watercolour if you wanted to bring in a little bit of colour in there as well. So let's, um, let's add a little bit of lace along the bottom. 
Now, I don't necessarily like this dark white. I'm not going to distress it too much. I just want to get a, a slight colour on it like that. You can see the difference. You could go darker if you wanted to, but I want to stay relatively light because it's about contrasting the colours, all your different colours. And we want to stick that across. Same with this one. I mean, you could put it up the side and add some buttons if you wanted to. I was actually looking for my buttons earlier to put some buttons on it, but um, do you think I can find them? And I only had them out a couple of days ago. But I am in the middle of a few projects, so um, they probably are buried. I do need to... I guess pause and have a, a bit of a clean up. I'm going to slightly angle her just to give it just a little, another point of interest. And the same with this one over here. This photo pack of the uh, found rel relatives, the parents. I actually really love it. It's got a lot of different size um, portraits in it, some long and skinny ones. It's got male and female. Actually, I want her down a little bit. That'll be carried away. <clears throat> Before I put the butterfly on, I want to have a look at something a little bit different up the side. So I use die cuts in my sample one. So I'll pull out some die cuts and we'll have a play around. I might go a little bit of a different colour. We got so in the first one I used a flower which we will stay with the flower but I want to use a different leaf and look to use diff some different colors in the leaf so I've got these little daisy I'm pretty sure they are a Tim Holtz dye from one of their kits I could be wrong because I've got a real mixture in here So you've got some leaves, that's quite interesting too, if you wanted to go with the white leaves. Now this one I did um, distress a little bit, so you only want to do it softly. It is pretty fragile too, so probably just pound it more than drag it. bounce off the different coloured um, photos so we've got a relatively light photo over here so we can go the bit darker one and this one we've got the darker photo so we can go the bit lighter one you can see what I mean I'm actually I might make this a little bit darker it's the beauty about inking you can just layer until you're happy with the colour and you could die cut that in black too if you wanted or a dark brown the ink I'm using today is walnut stain it's a distress oxide I really love it love it I think I'll have to get my pad re-inked soon or um, order a new one Okay, so if we put them side by side, see how you get a different look with the lighter flower um, and, you know, the more defined 
um, butterfly on here but I've left the background fairly light so it will pop forward this one here I might just distress the edge a bit more So you can adjust it as your project goes along. and I'm just um, in case that was off camera I've just inked the whole butterfly how oh, beautiful so different looks same thing so have it you know have a play around with what you're doing all right so let's add some color only a little bit in the form of a leaf now, I was thinking blue with one of them. And I've got some die cuts already done. that one actually so take this one out let's have a look at a another color for her so I've got some beautiful aquary color Yep, I actually like the dark green emerald, I think it is, emerald green. Um, I may cut a little bit off, just the tip off that. Um, Alright, so get let's get those glued on and I'll just cut the tip off this one as well. That's the beauty about having things cut out just in your stash, ready to go, it helps with your creativity. Imagine if you're doing this project and you thought, oh, I might get a, I might try a die cut. You gotta get your machine out. You gotta find a die cut that you like. Then you've gotta cut it out. And then you've gotta decide what color you want before you cut it out. This way, if you've got a few different on, on hand, it just makes the whole process a lot quicker and easier. And it helps with your creativity, just by throwing it on and go, mm, no, I don't quite, I, I like that, but I'd like it in a different color. Have a few different colors. And just cause it's a leaf, guys, it doesn't have to be green. beauty about art glitter it dries fairly quickly so and having that metal tip for this intricate stuff it just makes your life so much easier you could glue stick it uh, look my experience with die cuts and glue stick you got to drag it a little bit and you can tear it and you just end up in like it it glugs because it gets caught on the edge of the die 
so a big chunk comes out of off the glue stick I haven't had too much success with it but then I always like to do things fairly quickly so it might be just the force of it And then I've just got some little tickety things that I've made from, I think it was the Field Notes um, Stampers Anonymous stamp set. Uh, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, guys, because I do have a couple of them. And I like to make um, my ephemera and have it on hand as well. I've got a few different colors in it once again trial and error of what you like what you don't like lovely put those to sides now you can if you want, you know, put a, a tab down there, a label, some words of some sort, totally up to you. Now we're going to do the top of the tags and then we'll um, put some seam binding on there. So finished with the glue. And find my hand punch. So I'm just going to use a hand punch because I actually wanted a a little bit bigger hole than um, the crocodile gives me because I'm not going to put an eyelet on this one I'm actually going to punch out a little flower shaped circle so I'm using some book page here so I'll punch the same hole so that we have the same hole when we put this uh, hole protector over the top and I'm using a little scallop um, stamp. It's seven eighths of an inch. And then I'm just going to eyeball it and line it up to try and get it fairly central. But you could definitely just use, um, you know, you can get these page protectors. You could do an eyelet entirely up to you this is just doing something a little bit different now I did two for each tag because we're going to put one on the back because on the back will be our journaling space so we do want to ink it as well and this also helps protect and reinforce the whole because we're putting ribbon through it and now because the holes are the same size that we've used the same punch for them they will just align with the hole that we've put on the tag like that turn it over on there see how easily it aligns when you use the same hole punch and if you're using um, store-bought tags and it's already got a hole don't be afraid to use you punch over the top of that if you need to make it a different size to align it if you're making 
these yourself. These hand punches, they're really, really cheap to buy. And now we're just going to quickly ink it around and we'll put some seam binding ribbon or you could do sari silk. and tied in a bow. I'll just put my pin back in the glue. I actually forgot about that this morning. I went away and made a coffee and come back and I went, oh, I hope it hasn't dried up. But I was pretty lucky. The needle went in fairly quickly. So I've just got some seam binding here. Um, it's 14 mil. So 14 mil across. Just going to cut two lengths. And then we're just going to thread it through and tie a bow. And then we can trim those off just on an angle. that one done like I was saying we've got a few projects on the go and I feel like my desk is closing in on me so um, when I finish this video I will um, take some time to clear it because I like working off a fairly organized desk or let's put it this way I like to start a project off with a fairly organized desk because um, as we know as paper crafters that doesn't last very long at all. And we'll just angle the top of that. There we go, guys. So three different three different looks using three different backgrounds you know you can always put a little label up there some wording down the bottom you can add extra stuff if you wish but I just wanted to sort of show you the basic concept to that and and how different backgrounds give you a different effect um, change it up with a bit of color um, and um, yeah be look and and have a go and see what you come up with but thanks guys i hope you um got something out of today's video and got inspired um i love using photos i don't do enough of it so um watch this space i'll be looking to do some more projects with them please subscribe to my channel because i love bringing these videos to you and i look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks guys and have a great day